this sporting event on KMA FM 99.1. Brought to you by the KMA Sportscasters Club. Hey, thank you, Don, and a hey, good thank you, Don, and a good evening to you. Here with you tonight. We are going to play some Rolling Valley Conference baseball. It should be a fun one. We've got a state-ranked battle here tonight. Coon Rapids Baird in town to take on Cam. These two have already met once this year. This one is the second time around. Coon Rapids Baird, 16 and four on the year. 10 and two in Rolling Valley Conference play. They've been on a tear lately. They've won their last four. They've won 13 of their last 14, one of which was a 4-3 win over Cam back on June 1st. More on that one in a little bit. As for the Cam Cougars, led by head coach Dan Doherty, they are 15 and three on the year, nine and two in Rolling Valley Conference play. They've definitely done some really nice things this year. They can hit the cover off the baseball. They found a way to get on base throughout the season, but they've had a couple of games where things didn't go their way. We mentioned the loss to Coon Rapids Bear. They also had a loss to Woodbine last week. However, right now their goal, they want to be playing their best as we get ready for the tournament trail that'll be coming up in about a month. Now, as I mentioned, these two teams met back on June 1st. It was a 4-3 Coon Rapids Baird victory. That came despite not having a hit in that game for the Crusaders. Now, it was early in the season for Cam. They put together the best pitching rotation they could for that night with Joe Kaufman, Lane Speaker, and Colby Rich. They held Coon Rapids Baird hitless, but they were able to get on with some walks some timely bunts, a couple of errors, and they were able to escape Coon Rapids with a 4-3 to three win. Tonight's pitching matchup is going to be a treat. It'll definitely be worth the price of admission for Coon Rapids Baron tonight. It's Quentin Colbertson, a Northern State commit, 5-0 and on the season, a 1.57 ERA, 48 strikeouts to his name, only five walks as well in 35 and two-third innings. Opponents hitting just 179 against him. As for Cam, Joe Kaufman's on the bump tonight. Three and two on the year. That record may be a bit deceptive. Uh, 2.04 ERA, 56 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 96 against him in 24 innings of action. Coon Rapids Baird, led by head coach John Waddle, will set the batting lineup for you. It's Easton Hayes, Preston McAllister, Aaron McAllister, Josh Ramirez, Lance Clayberg, Gabe Obert, Quinton Colbertson, Colby Colbertson, and Tanner Oswald. The lineup defensively for Cam to start things off. Joe Kaufman pitching, Colby Rich catching. Keep an eye on him offensively. He's one of the top hitters in the state right now. Cade Tickner playing first. Seth Hensley is at second. Lane Speaker is at short. Jo Jack Fullman at third. Your outfield left to right is Ethan Fullman, Connor McKee, and Brody Paulson. Now offensively for Cam, McKee will lead off. Colby Rich batting second. Speaker third. Kaufman in the four hole. Tickner five. Ethan Fullman six. Hensley seven. Jack Fullman eight. Paulson, the nine hitter. Defensively for Coon Rapids Baron tonight, Quentin Colbertson is on the bump. Aaron McAllister behind the dish. Josh Ramirez at first. Preston McAllister at second. They've got Tanner Oswald at short. Lance Clayberg at third. Colby Colbertson at left. Easton Hayes in right and center. And Gabe Obert in right. Good officiating crew tonight. Bob Sweeney, former Shandell Athletic Director, as well as Chris Johnson from the Stanton area. Should be fun here tonight. We are looking forward to this one. This is the first of three broadcasts I've got for you this week. Also coming on tonight, just started a little bit ago on KMA 960, Austin McNorton is in Greenfield, Nottoway Valley, Southwest Valley softball. That one started just before 7 o'clock in Proud of Iowa Conference play. And according to Austin's Twitter, they are... In the second with a three-zip Nottoway Valley lead. Tomorrow we've got HSCW Logan Magnolia softball. Wednesday I've got trainer Tri-Center baseball. And then Thursday Derek Martin will have Creston Clorinda softball. It's a great night for baseball. Couldn't ask for much better weather. Last time I was doing a game, which was last Thursday, I was sweating a lot. Tonight might be the best night of the year to do a high school baseball game. And this could be... The best game of the year in KMA land. We'll find out. State-ranked battle in Class 1A in the Rolling Valley Conference coming up here in just a few minutes. It's Coon Rapids, Baird, and Cam here on KMA FM 99.1. Lineup's being introduced right now. We've got the anthem coming up here in a moment. 
You'll hear from customers that choose Barrett Auto Center of Glenwood time and time again. Barrett customers come in for vehicles and service work, but they come back for conversation and honest advice. They want one of the largest pre-owned and fully serviced inventories in KMA land, and they return when they've gone elsewhere and it just isn't the same. See and believe for yourself how little differences add up to a better car buying experience. Come back to Barrett's and Barrett'sAutoCenter.com. Bedford Drug offers more than just your prescriptions. They are now providing immunizations, including flu. All right, well, welcome back to Anita. All right, well, welcome back KMA to Anita here on KMA FM 99.1. Maybe I hit H1 one too many times. They did the national anthem before the softball, the game. The softball they game. They do a lot of times in the Rolling Valley. They'll, they'll play first. the softball game varsity. first in terms of varsity. And then they'll nightcap it. They'll with nightcap it the, with the baseball varsity contest. That's baseball what they did. varsity contest. That's no what they did. So coming up before this no one anthem coming up before this one. Is, like I said, they played it before the start of the softball game. So Coon Rapids Bear. Start of the softball game. So Coon Rapids Bear going to start things off. Easton Hayes, Hayes, Preston McAllister, Aaron, Aaron McAllister. If, if anyone is to get on base, Josh Ramirez would step up to the plate as well. Coon Rapids Bear has found some consistency offensively as of late, hitting 344 on the year. Their head coach John Waddle was our sports teacher today, and he told me he said, "Hey, if you'd have told me." We'd be hitting a month ago a that we'd be hitting 344 as a team. I don't think I'd have believed you, but we're putting the ball in play. We're doing the things we that's need to exactly do. What they did, as I mentioned earlier, and that's exactly what they did, as I mentioned earlier, in that first win over a camp. No hits, but they're able to score four runs. That's very, very impressive. Any time you can do that, definitely against a, against a pitching staff, the caliber of Cam, with Joe Coppin starting things off here tonight. It's going to be a fun one. We hope you're watching. We hope you're listening on the KMA video stream, online, KMALand.com. Huge thanks to Levi's son. For with helping us Easton out. Up to the point, with that, Easton well, Hayes up to the plate. 412 on the year, the 468 on base percentage, and a 574 right. slug. A junior batting right. Set to face the southpaw, Set to face the southpaw Joe, Joe Kaufman. First pitch back low to and back to the one. fence. That's a ball one. Now, like I said, Coon Rapids Barrett did face now, like Kaufman, said, Coon Barrett did the first, face time. So like the first time, so it's not like they're not familiar with, with him. Sometimes you don't see a lot of lefties. With him, sometimes you don't bit. see a lot of lefties. I can get you a little bit, but I'd say they know each other pretty well. That I'd say they know each other pretty well. That one is in there for a strike. Gets some swinging, brings the count to one and one. One ball, one strike. So one ball, one strike. Joe Kaufman to Easton Hayes. From Joe Kaufman to Easton Hayes. The one one on its way. That one misses upstairs. Back to the fence. Two balls, one strike. And it's two balls, one strike. Kaufman so far this year. Kaufman so far this year. Has. Has. Tusk looks like 21 walks. Tusk looks, looks like 21 walks. And maybe a little, little, little bit of a walk problem is that's found back. Bring it to 2 2. His whip, also known as walks, hits inning pitch. 1.33. So, I mean, that's not bad, but. Pretty darn good. And that's pretty darn good. Maybe like it. But you'd maybe like it a, a tad lower. The other guy on the bump tonight, Quentin Colbert. The other guy on the bump tonight, Quentin right Colbertson's got an insane whip right now. Here's the 2-2 two 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 from Kaufman to Hayes. First batter of the night, chops, it, batter foul. Of the night, chops it foul, it's and it'll pitch. be a spoiled pitch. And now it's a 2-2 two two count. And now it's a 2-2 two two count. Still from Kaufman to Hayes. Still from Kaufman to Hayes. So in baseball you wouldn't complain about spoiling Also in baseball pitches. you wouldn't complain about spoiling pitches. Work that pitch count up a little bit. Here's a 2-2 two two chases Hayes. upstairs. Down and goes Joe Hayes. Coffin, and Joe Coffin, his first strikeout of the Puts evening. One away for Coon Rapids Baird. Puts one away for Coon Rapids Baird and now that'll bring Preston McAllister's playing second base. Preston McAllister's playing second base tonight for the Crusaders up to the plate. He's hitting 254 on the year, a 430 on base percentage, 322 slug. Does have four extra base hits. Does have four extra base hits, all of which are doubles. Which are doubles. First pitch to McAllister. He sits on it outside for a ball. One out of the count. Couldn't ask for a better night of softball. Couldn't here ask for a better night of softball here in Anita. McAllister stepped out of the box. Now he steps McAllister back in. McAllister stepped out of the box. Now he steps back in. The one zero. -oh. The one zero. -oh. Just high and inside. It's a two. -oh Just count. high and inside. It's a two zero -oh count. Coffin, the first batter, got, got so ahead Coffin, in the, the first batter, got, got ahead in the case, count. I guess down in the count. Or in his case, I guess down in the count. 
Bowed back, got a strikeout. Now he's down. Bowed back, got a strikeout. Now he's that down 2 0. That one's in there. Count. Nicely put. And it's a 2 1 count. Tap of the first. One gun. Tap of the first. One gun. It's Preston McAllister up to the dish with the 2 1 count in his favor. Sees the 2 1 from Kaufman. Sees the 2 1 from Kaufman. Just low. And it's a 3 1 count. Preston McAllister this year. Preston McAllister this year. Has drawn 10 walks. Has drawn 10 walks. Crew Roberts Baird. Crew Roberts Baird. About eight guys. That one's. About eight in guys. That one's in there for a strike. McAllister was ready to take. And sag a bag. And they've sag got, a bag. About they've six got guys that are good about for on six average, guys that are good for on average about a walk a game. Or a walk every two games. Or a walk every two games. Here's the payoff pitch from Coffin to McAllister. Here's the payoff pitch from Coffin to McAllister. Gets by the catcher, it's Rich. It's ball four. And McAllister's on with a one out walk. McAllister's on with a one out walk. Numbering Aaron McAllister up to the play with a runner on first. Houston Hayes struck out. Preston McAllister. Houston Hayes struck out. Preston McAllister reached on a walk. Now it's up to Aaron McAllister with one gun. Here in the tap of the first. He's hitting 344 on the air, a 487 on base percentage. He's got 16 RBI. He has homered twice. And in total, eight extra base sets, six doubles. Coffin relaunches that one upstairs. Coffin relaunches that one upstairs. 1 0. Coffin. Finkenna. Finkenna. Recklessly in control, maybe the best Recklessly way to put it. Mean, he's, missed low, and then he's, he's missed high, he's missed low, and then he's just been able to put some deuces over the, over the plate. Here's the 1 0. That one. Over the plate. Here's the 1 0. That one. A called strike. One, one count from Joe Coffin. It's a 1 1 count from Joe Coffin. To Aaron McAllister. Again, defensively for Cam, Colby Rich, Kane Tickner. Rich at catching. Tickner at first. Seth Hensley at second. Lane Speaker at short. Jack Foreman at third. Ethan Foreman, Connor McKean, Paulson, and Brody Paulson in the bags. That one upstairs and away. Upstairs and away. You see a Fullman, McKee, Paulson, left, in center, the right. Tonight. In the outfield and tonight. 335 and left and right center. 345 to dead center. 310 in the corners here in Anita. The two on from Kaufman to McAllister. The two on from Kaufman to McAllister. Fouls it back and away, and we'll get a 2 2 count. With one gone here. With one gone here. In the tap of the first, get one a number eight. Coon Rap is bared. Number seven Cam. One a number seven Cam. The rankings are released today by the rankings are released today by Radio Iowa and the Iowa High School Baseball Coaches Association. That one ripped along the left field line. Foul McAllister. It looked like it was kind of up on the bat. That keeps the count. That keeps the count at two and two. Coffin got down early on Hayes. So Coffin got down early on Hayes. Foul back on a strikeout. Got down early on McAllister. Ended up having a 3 2 walk. Got down early on Aaron McAllister. Now he's trying to make something happen. That one's up and inside, and it's a full count now. So 3 2 the count. From Joe Coffman. From Joe Coffman. The lefty on the bump for the Cougars. The lefty on the bump for Dan the Cougars, led by head coach Dan Launches Doherty. Launches the payoff pitch. That one's low in the Launches dirt. Ball four. Back-to-back back back walks put runners at back to back walks put runners at first and second. So move Preston McAllister to second. Aaron McAllister to first. And Josh Ramirez, the first baseman, up to the plate. He's hitting 389 on the year, 479 on base, 630 slug. He's got 18 RBI. He's got 18 he's RBI. He's, got he's an extra base threat. Five he's got singles, five singles, a triple, and two homers. So if you're doing the math eight at home, that is eight Dan extra Dan base Dan hits. Is now Coach Dan Doherty going to come out? Have a conversation with Kaufman. Have a conversation with Kaufman. Doherty will come back into the dugout. Come back into the dugout. And Colby Rich, the catcher, will. Colby Rich, the catcher, will. Step back behind home plate. Step back behind home plate. Scoreless here in the tap of the first. Scoreless here in the tap of the first. One gone. Runners on first and second for Runners Coon on first Baird. and second for Coon Rapids Bear. Preston McAllister at second. It's Preston McAllister at second. Aaron McAllister who's catching. Aaron McAllister who's catching will not be courtesy ran for. He's at first. Coppin checks Preston at first. Second. Launches the first pitch to Ramirez. Check swing called strike and it's no one count. Both these teams. Both these teams 
with some state tournament experience in the past five years. Coon Rapids Bear making it just two years ago in 2019. Cam going two years before that in 2017. Ramirez fouls that one along the third baseline. Coon Rapids Bear ran into Don Bosco. Cam ran into the buzzsaw that is and was, still is. Catholic. Newman Catholic out of Mason City. 0 2 from Coffin Ramirez. Upstairs for a ball. It's a 1 2 count. Coffin really could have used that Coffin one. Coffin really could have used that one to you know, get a three pitch strikeout. You'll know, get a three pitch strikeout. So it just gives you a little bit of confidence as well. Doesn't get it there and they go back. Doesn't get it there and they go back for a 1 2 from Joe Coffin to Josh Ramirez. 1 2 on its way. 1 2 on its way. That one's high. 2 2 now the count. Ramirez this year. Ramirez this year. Has been hit by pitch 11 times. been hit by times. pitch 11 it times. That ranks state. up there in the state. Not a stat you like it's to lead. It's not a stat you like to lead, but. However you get on base. So there's a call get on base. Three. So there's a get called strike three. Won't get on base that time. Second strikeout of the night. For Joe Kaufman. For Joe Kaufman. And he's one out away from being able to work himself out of this wiggle. Where he put runners on first and second with a couple of walks. So send Lance Clayberg up to the plate, the third Crusaders. baseman for the Crusaders. He's a sophomore. He's done some nice things this season. Nice things this season. I think 481. He sits on that one. That's a called strike. Kaufman throwing heaters now. After giving out those, after giving out those a pair of one-out walks. A pair of one-out walks. Coffin will check the runner at second, that being Preston McAllister. Now Clayberg takes a healthy swing, swing. Can't, can't get anything out of it. It's an 0-2 count. So Kaufman one, so one pitch away from working out of this jam. Unscathed. That's kind of been the way Cam likes to operate. Bend, but don't break. Here's the 0-2. Here's the 0-2. Just tied. It's a 1-2 count. Preston McAllister got on Preston with a walk. Preston McAllister got on with a walk. Aaron McAllister got on with a walk. Sandwich between East and Hayes strike out to Josh Ramirez strike out. There's the one two on its way. He chopped he foul. He just got a piece of it to keep it alive. Kaufman will get a new baseball. Kaufman will get a new baseball. Still a one two count. Gabe Obert awaits on deck. Gabe Obert awaits on deck for Cooner Hop and Spared if they're able to keep this inning alive. Here's the one two. Here's the one two from Kaufman to Clayberg. On its way, that's high. On its it's way, that's high, and it's a two two count. McAllister's. McAllister's. On the base pass, second and On the base pass, second and first. Coon Rapids Bear trying to score a run here in the tap of the first. Kaufman with the two two. Kaufman with the two two. That is well up there. Good job by Rich to love that. Otherwise, could maybe move a base, but, move a base, but don't have to worry. Now it's a payoff. Don't have to worry. Now it's a payoff pitch coming Clayberg. for Lance Clayberg. Imagine the runners are going. Imagine the runners are going. Two count, two out. Three two count, two, two out. Scoffman will check second. Now into the three two runners now go. Into the three, two just runners fouls. Go. Just it fouls. They kind of got it up on the the barrel of the bat. It looked the like. barrel of the bat. It looked like and. Gets another pitch, but again. Gets with, another pitch, but again with, with the full count and two. With gone, the full count and, and two gone, I mean the runners are going on contact. So three two the count. Goffman just gets a piece of that. Does Ramirez? And this at bat stays alive. So another 3-2 pitch coming from Joe Kaufman to Josh Ramirez. On its way, lengthy at bat, the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, got him. And Cam strands runners at first and second. Three strikeouts for Kaufman. We go to the bottom of the first. It is scoreless here on Cam AFM. On Cam AFM. Five years, Chad Mobility has provided you the latest technology, competitive prices, and a nationwide high-speed network. Though important, we're a whole lot more. 
We serve your hometown communities, sponsor your local chambers and events. It's our goal to work hard while giving back to those who graciously support us. At Chat Mobility, our interests are much deeper than providing great service. We're just committed to serving you. To learn more, see us at chatmobility.com. Hey. Find your place at Northwest Missouri State University. From day one, experience a university like no other. In the classroom, you'll find career-ready academic programs and hands-on learning, not to mention championship sports teams and clubs. Find your passion and your people. Plus, textbooks and a fully loaded laptop are included in your tuition with $19 million in scholarships and aid available. They also have a 97% placement rate. Visit nwmissouri.edu to apply today. Northwest Missouri State University, where Bearcats connect. Welcome back to Anita here Welcome on KMAFM 991. Trevor Mater here with you tonight. We're also video streaming online, KMALand.com. Huge thanks to Levi's son for helping us out with that. We go to the bottom of the first, scoreless. Crooner up and spared, got runners on first and second in their frame of the first, but Joe Coffin able to clamp down, gets three strikeouts, sends us to Cam's portion of the inning. Connor McKean, Colby Rich, Lane Speaker will start things off. That is a potent top of the lineup for Coach Dan Doherty's Cougars and Joe Kaufman is in the cleanup spot. Defensively nine for Coon Rapids Baird, Quentin Colbertson, the Northern State commit on the bump. He's been stellar so far this season. He's had control as well. That was one thing in talking to Coach John Waddle that he's been really impressed with. He's just been putting it over the strike zone and one, getting strikeouts may paint the corners a little bit and then two, trusting his defense to make plays. He's got a 1.57 ERA, a whip of 0.81, 0.5 walks on those 48 strikeouts. Uh, five at all in the year, opponents hitting 179 against him. The only thing is, with a pitcher like this that throws strikes, you know, as legendary Shenandoah assistant coach Ryan Matheny would say, you got to swing the bat, and Cam has no trouble swinging the bat. We'll see if that pays dividends for them here tonight. Colbertson. Watches the first pitch, and that is ripped to right by McKee. That is back. Underneath it cleanly, though, is Ober, and there's one gone, but one pitch, one swing. Again, you talk to, I mean, probably not just the coaching legend that is Mr. Matheny, but the pitcher's throwing strikes, you swing the bat, you're the bare minimum going to more often than not put the ball in play. So here's Colby Rich. He is hitting at an insane clip. So far this season, I could get you the numbers on where he ranks in the state here in just a moment. First pitch, he sits on it. It's a ball to bring it to a 1-0 count. Rich, a recent Jim Hughes Real Estate Cam A Land Athlete of the Week. Having himself a stellar year. 1-0 pitch. Coming from Colbertson. Rich has eight homers this year. That's inside for a ball. He's He was hitting 614. That's good for fourth in the state amongst all classes. His eight home runs ranks first. His 46 RBI rank first. His 35 hits is first. His 65 total bases rank second as he sits on that one, swings and misses. And it's a 2 1 count. Also, his batting average of 614 is second in 1A. Uh, he's just been raking offensively. He's on base percentage of 699 is fourth and 1A. Here's the 2-1 and that's a ball or a called strike. He's among many right now that I would say have in his slugging percentage ranks third in class 1A to 1.14. Here's a 2-2 to Rich. Hit and play into center. That is back. That is back. That is Going to be off the wall and right. Obert will make the throw, but standing, sliding with a double is Colby Rich. I lost sight of it for a moment. And Rich gets on with a one-out double. He'll bolster that batting average a little bit. Give himself another extra base hit. And what is his 15th of the year? So Rich moves to second. Lane Speaker, who's also a Formidable bat in the Cougars lineup hitting 468 on the year with 28 RBI. Steps up to the plate. 
Colbertson working out of the stretch. Checks the uh, runner at second, and Rich now launches the first one. It's in the dirt off the catcher's gear of McAllister. That's going to allow Rich to move to third. Just took a weird hop off the chest of McAllister. Rich gets to third standing up. Now, speaker this year, some stats of note from him. He's scored 40 runs. That ranks first among all classes. As that one is in there for a strike. Didn't get there by much, but it does a 1-1. He's got four home runs of his own, which ranks fourth. He's drove in 28 RBIs, which ranks fourth in Class 1A. He's also been patient at the plate. He's drawn 21 walks. That's the second most in 1A. Here's the next pitch. Six outside on that one. It's a called ball. Two and one the count. So Rich and Speaker definitely give the Cougars that nice one-two punch at the top of their lineup, which every coach would crave to have. The two-one from Colbertson to Speaker. Rip to left, down for a hit. That'll send Rich in, and Lane Speaker adds to his RBI tally with a single here in the first. With one gone, and they'll keep the line moving. Joe Kaufman now up to the play. Love to help his own cause. One zip cam. They get on the board first. And Kaufman. The lefty up to the plate. Colbertson takes a throw down to first to Ramirez, but the speaker gets back safely. Colbertson now ready to go into the first pitch. I want to low it away for a ball. So it's a 1 0 count. From Colbertson. Runner goes. Ramirez to throw on a line that was on a hop, and Speaker gets there safely. As coming over from short was Oswald. Couldn't get there. The throw kind of took a weird bounce, and Lane Speaker slides into second safely. Joe Kaufman with an RBI opportunity. A 2-0. Kaufman. Do his delivery. Comes set. Checks the runner. Checks the runner again. Checks it a third time. Now Rockets a 2-0. The tie for a ball. It's a 3-0 count on Colbertson. Only five walks all year in danger of posting number six here. Wayne Speaker at second after an RBI single and then able to steal second moments ago. Here's the 3 0. Colbertson again will check over. Bunt shown. Pull back. It's outside. It's a four pitch walk. Only the sixth walk of the year for Quentin Colbertson. Getting kind of rattled a little early. Coach John Waddle will come out of the dugout. Looks like Aaron McAllister will come out from behind home plate and have a conversation with his pitcher. Sometimes you just. You know, as a coach and as a catcher, you've just got to settle them down a little bit. That's easier said than done, though, against a cam squad that can really put the put the barrel on the ball. And they've done that. Connor McKee had a, a hard hit to right that was in the glove of Gabe Obert, and then Colby Rich got a double that was not far from carrying out here. And on a calm night like tonight, it's a little surprising. Maybe it didn't carry out here. The lane speaker drove him in on a a single after Rich was able to move to third on a pass ball. And then Speaker able to steal second moments ago. Joe Kaufman gets to first on a walk. Here's Cade Tickner, who's playing first tonight for the Cougars. Up to the plate. He's hitting 254 on the air, 343 on base percentage. And a 390 slug. Colbertson. Checks the runner. That one's fouled away. Out of play. Oh, won the count. 
One zip cam here in the bottom of the first state ranked battle here on KMAF 991, Clorinda Shenandoah, and video streaming online, KMALand.com. Couldn't ask for a much better night for some high school baseball. Definitely in the, the middle of June. You know, we're kind of getting the dog days of summer. Here's the 0 1 that was inside. Tickner had to lean away from it. And it's a 1 1. You know, last time I did a game, it was in Council Bluffs, and the heat index was about 108 degrees. It was pretty miserable tonight. Couldn't be much better. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss. Chasing all the way was Tickner. And it's a 1-2 count. One gone here in the bottom of the first. In softball action tonight, Cam got a 12-0 win over Coon Rapids Baird. That game was a 5-30 start. The 1-2 from Colbertson to Tickner. A high and upstairs for a ball. Count now full. Or no, excuse me, it should be a, it should be a two two count. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself. Runners on first and second. Speaker at second, Coffin at first. Colbertson takes a couple glances at Speaker. Now that one is upstairs and inside. And again, Tickner had to lean away from that one. Now the count's full at three and two. Colbertson uncharacteristically struggling a little bit. And Whatever pitch McAllister wanted from him at first, he he waved it off. Here's the payoff pitch. High for a ball. That's a walk to low the bases. And Quinton Colbertson has one-third of the amount of walks tonight that he's had all season. So that'll bring Ethan Fullman up to the plate. Fullman, multi-sport athlete for the Cougars, cross country. Runner also was a state medalist in wrestling at 120 pounds. He fouls that one out of play and hit the light pole and ricocheted off the light pole. Looked like on top of the Coon Rapids Bear dugout. And we'll get another pitch. Owen won the count. Fun night of baseball here in the Rolling Valley Conference. Been a fun conference to watch so far this year. Here's the 0 1 from Colbertson. To Fullman, uh, low and away, and it's a ball. One and one. McAllister able to keep the ball in front of him. And Colbertson had came up off the hill as well, just to just in case it took a weird roll. Here's the one one. Colbertson has that one foul back by Fullman. I'm bringing it to a one two count. Still one guy here in the bottom of the first. It was the leadoff hitter for Cam when Connor McKee. Flew out to right. Then Colby Rich doubled. Lane Speaker drove him in. Joe Kaufman got on a walk. Kate Tickner got out on a walk. Cam trying to maybe put a crooked number on the board. They could do so with a base hit from Fullman. Holbertson steps off the rubber. Regroups. Now steps back on. One ball, two strikes. One gone to Ethan Fullman. The one, two, just missed. McAllister trying to frame it to no avail, and it's a two, two count. So two balls, two strikes, one gun still to Ethan Fullman. Fullman, a state wrestling medalist for Atlantic Camp, part of the co-op they have with Coach Tim Duff. Here's the two, two, called strike three, and Colbertson gets his first strike out of the night, 49th of the season. That's the third called strike we've had of the evening between Kaufman and Colbertson. And now up comes Seth Hensley, the second baseman who's sitting 380, or 283 rather on the air, 415 on base. Does have 13 RBI, only three extra base hits to his name so far this season. First pitch. Inside for a ball. It's a 1 0 count. I mentioned Coon Rapids Baird hitting 344 as a team. Cam hitting 357. So two very hard hitting teams going out here tonight. The 1 0 to Hensley. Swing and a miss. 1 on 1 the count. You know, Hensley feels like a name that's been around Cam forever. Of course, Thomas Hensley. 
multi-sport standout, a big part of their state tournament berth back in 2017. Here's a 1-1 one -one in there for a strike, and it's a 1-2 on Hensley. Nate Hensley did some nice things for the Cougars as well in multiple sports. One ball, two strikes from Quentin Colbertson to Seth Hensley. Trying to get out of this inning with minimal damage. The one-two fouled away. Hensley will get another one. On a one-two count. It's still one zip cam. You're in the bottom of the first. Cam, 167 RBI this year, ranks fifth in class 1A. Hensley fouls that one out of play. Cam scored 220 runs total. That ranks third in class 1A. Their run differential, 138. That ranks fifth in class 1A. And we've got time for a new baseball, it looks like. Now Hensley will step back into the batter's box with a 1-2 count awaiting for Mr. Quentin Colbertson. Runners on. All the bases are loaded. Here's the 1-2 inside. Called strike three. Got him. And good job by Colbertson to work out of this with minimal damage. Only gives up one run on two hits. We go to the second. One zip. Cam here on Cam AFM. On Cam AFM. This is Kane with Gowing Plumbing. Gowing Plumbing is the name to remember for 24-hour service. That includes after hours and weekends, because that is when problems usually occur. We're located what? in Shenandoah, but we also serve the surrounding no. communities. Cam's That's the way it's been nothing. done for more than 70 years. And we work on boiler heat, so call fully licensed Gowing Plumbing any time of day or night, 246-1803 or after hours at 712-310-9248. HawkeyeFord.com. It's where you'll find a complete selection of pre-owned cars and trucks. It's also where you can estimate your trade-in value and receive a no-hassle quote. Since 1988, Hawkeye Ford has been offering a high level of customer service and a commitment to making the process of buying your vehicle an enjoyable one. They strive to deliver 100% satisfaction every time you visit their location on Highway 34 east of Red Oak or on their 24-7 location, HawkeyeFord.com. Uh, welcome back to Anita here on uh, Cam AFM back to Anita here on Cam AFM one with you tonight. Trevor Mater here with you tonight. It's two, it's two one nothing actually. Two, one nothing second. actually, if we go to the second. Cam waiting, Coon Rapids Bear. Cam waiting, Coon, Coon Rapids Bear. Got a lot of things going on. Trying to tweet, trying to make sure the video stream is up. Sometimes it can. I mean that I talked before. I mean that I talked before. Cam's got one on Coon Rapids Bear. Cam's got one on Coon Rapids Bear. Would like to answer. And they will try to begin. They will try to begin things. With the six hitter in the lineup, with the Olbert. six hitter in the lineup, Gabe Olbert. Olbert again, one zip cam. Can't have the bases loaded. Olbert can't have the bases bunt loaded. Back. Olbert showed bunt pull back. It's in the dirt for a ball. For just tuning in, Cam got on. For just tuning in, Cam got the on. Rich double. The Colby Rich double. Lane Speaker drove it in. Lane Cam Speaker drove it in. Cam was able to get the bases loaded with a couple of walks from Quinton Colbert. But then they couldn't do anything with it. But then they couldn't do anything with it after that. Good job by Colbert to clamp down. Now Obert sits on that one. It's in there for a strike. So I mean, ideally you don't ever want to give up. So I mean, ideally you don't ever want to give up any runs. Definitely when you're facing a pitching staff that you've been getting hits against the last time. I think if you told Coach John Waddle, I think if you told Coach John Waddle when the bases were loaded, one that you'd end the inning down with one gone, that you'd end the inning down one nothing as Obert chases one for strike two. I think you take two. I think you take it. I mean, you, you knew you were going to probably I mean, have to score two runs. You knew you were going to probably have to score two runs to win it anyways. And that's kind of what he to win it anyways. That's kind of what he, he was, told hey, me. His sports feature was, "Hey, we know no hit again. Here's the one. Can't go in and get no hit again. Here's the one two chop foul. Keeps that one alive. It was kind of lunging. Over keeps that one alive. It was kind of lunging at that one. Make contact though. Over. But make contact though. Over three seventy nine on four sixty four on base percentage. Five hundred slugging. So one ball, two strikes. From Joe Kopp in the game over. Kopp and all three outs came with strikeouts. Back in the first, gets another one there. Got over to chase a little bit. Four strikeouts for Joe Kopp. And he also had a little control struggles early. Gave up a couple of walks. Stranded runners at first and second. 
is Quinn Colbertson, the pitcher, would love to help his own cause by getting on base. He's hitting 240 this year, one extra base hit. That one up there, and it's a ball, 1 0 the count. On well, softball action tonight on KMA 960, Austin and Norton's in Greenfield. Now we have Valley with the lead over Southwest Valley. So that one's high for a ball, brings it to a 2 0 count. It was 7 1 Nottoway Valley in the top of the third, and they actually just went final there in Greenfield, 13 1. Be the mercy rule is that one's found back and away. Colbertson keeps it alive. 1 2. So 13 1. Lindsey Davis, 3 for 3, 2 doubles, 3 RBI. Valley Valley moves to 12 and 12 on the season. Austin will have a full detailed rundown online later on tonight. Here's the one two inside near the ankles of Colbertson. And the count's now full. Or no, it counts a two and two. I couldn't quite see the scoreboard. I have a whole scoreboard. As Colbertson sends that one to the fence back in front of us. Okay, beautiful ninth. For some base for some baseball here in Anita and across all of KMA land and softball for that matter. Still a two and two from Joe Kaufman to Quinton Colbertson. The two two inside Colbertson had to step away from it. Count full. So three and two the count. The Walker knock pitch from Kaufman to Colbertson is swung on and missed. Fifth strikeout of the night for Joe Kaufman. When you're on, you're on. And now Colby Colbertson will try to get something going with two out. 325 on the season is Colbertson. Not a lot of power, at least early on. 13 hits, all of which have been singles. First one is in there for a strike. Joe Kaufman gave up a couple of walks in the first, but other than that, he's been throwing strikeouts. The 0-1, sway ahead of that one was Colbertson. That one was low and away as well, but he was chasing. It's an 0-2 camp. Kaufman, one pitch away from a clean inning and a sixth strikeout of the ninth. Here's the 0-2, chopped fair to Kaufman. Kaufman will turn around, make the throw to first to uh, Tickner, and that's how the inning ends. So it's a clean frame for Cam defensively. We go to the bottom of the second. One zip here on Cam AFM. AFM. Iowa Western Community College has important news for you. If you're a high school senior trying to figure out what your next step in life will be after high school, consider this. Students learning trade-specific skills will get you into the workplace quicker, making a good living and having a lot less college debt. Iowa Western offers one- to two-year programs in nursing, welding, industrial tech, and advanced manufacturing, plus many others. Great skills and great pay in less time. Talk to Iowa Western Community College in Clarinda and Shenandoah and start planning your future now. Why choose Malvern Bank? Because Malvern Bank is an education bank. Malvern Bank provides online informative resources and teaches folks like me financial literacy. Malvern Bank takes the time to answer your money questions on the phone, in person, or online. As an education bank, we want our customers to be mindful about money. To become a Malvern Bank customer, visit their website at malvern.bank. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Malvern Bank. We build community. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Anita here on KMA FM 991. Clarinda Shenandoah, Trevor Raider here with you tonight. We're also video streaming online, KMALand.com. Fun one of the Rolling Valley Conference tonight, a state-ranked battle. Two of the top teams in the RBC going for the top spot. Cam leading one zip as we go to the bottom of the second. It's their 8-9-1, starting with Jack Fullman, who swings at one in on the elbows for a strike. It's Jack Fullman, Brody Paulson. Connor McKee, anybody gets on. Colby Rich, who doubled back in the first, would join the party. Cam got one run on, but left the bases loaded back in the first. Here's Quentin Colbertson. 
The 0-1 to Fullman. McAllister tried to paint it, but Fullman with a nice eye on it. Sits away from it. And it's, no, they do call it a strike. No, it's the ball. Okay, 1-1. From where we're sitting, depending on where the third baseman is on both sides, it sometimes can disrupt my view of the, the ball count on the scoreboard. No doubt about that one as Colbertson puts it over the, the zone for a strike, and it's a 1-2 count. And Quentin Colbertson going to take his talents up north. That one's in there called strike three, and down goes down goes Fullman after he sits on that one, and that's now three straight strikeouts for Colbertson. So he's starting to maybe lock in a little bit. And all three have been the backwards K. Here's the nine-hitter, Brody Paulson, first time through the order still. For the Cougars, that one is inside for a ball. Paulson. This season. Swings and misses that one. It's now 1-1 one, one count. He's only a freshman hitting 342 on the year. With a 537 on base. A 395 slug. The 1-1 one, one on its way. Just outside, he sat on that one. McAllister again tried to frame it to appease the home plate umpire, but to no avail. Here's the 2 1. Swing and a miss, strike two. Might have just got a piece of it, but it's a 2 2 count. With one gone from Colbertson to Brody Paulson as Cam tries to turn it back over to Connor McKee. They will. In this inning, it's just a matter of whether one out or two outs. So that one is kind of off the end of the bat. It drops for a blooper in right, and Paulson able to run. That kind of hit the weird spot of the bat, kind of between the, you know, the fat part of it and the, the barrel. At least that's what it looked like, and it just dropped. So put Paulson on with a interesting single. And You'd love to get runners on base when you turn it back over the top of the order. Here's Connor McKee who flew out to right in the first. Connor hitting 368 on the year. He's going to run track at Central Missouri. That one's low for a ball. A standout hurdler for the Cougars. A part of their third place finishing shuttle hurdle team in Class 1A that, interestingly enough, had they been Class 2A, they'd have won the state title. But their time in Class 1A was only good for third. Fuller, Paulson had a little bit of a lead at first. And Paulson had got back a little bit. McAllister made a throw down the line to Ramirez, but Paulson gets back safely. Here's the 1-1 one, one. from Colbertson to McKee. High and inside for a ball. 2-1 and one the count. So Jack Fullman struck out. That was the third straight strikeout dealt by Colbertson. And Brody Paulson did a good job of battling. Found a way to get a blooper. And it's a 2-1 in there for a strike on McKee. And it's a 2-2 count. Colby Rich, Lane Speaker patiently awaiting. Definitely the, the heart of the Cougars lineup. Here's a 2-2. Lunge for it, into center for another single. Keeps the line moving. Pretty little unorthodox approach to that, but Connor McKee meets the bat. The bat meets the ball, and the ball ends in center field. So Connor McKee keeps the line moving. A single move, Brody Paulson to second. Colby Rich comes up with two on, and that is not a guy that you usually want to give runner-up opportunities. The only problem is, is, I mean, you don't want to, like, intentionally walk him. One, there's one out. And two, the guy coming up behind him is no easier of an out in lane speaker. Here's the first pitch from Colbert. So he'll check the runner at second. That one, did that hit the helmet of – no, it didn't. They're going to say it didn't. And it moves the runners. It almost looked like it ricocheted off the helmet of Rich, but he got down. It moves McKee to second. It moves Paulson to third. And what that does now is – Anything in play is probably going to score a run. Definitely something in the outfield. 
would move Paulson from third, I'd imagine. Give Rich another RBI. Here's the 1-0. Rich sits on that one. McAllister keeps it in front of him. Rich will give the stop side to Paulson at third. And it's a 2-0 count. Paulson at third, McKee at second. The 2-0 to Colby Rich. On the way, inside, almost on the elbows. And it's a 3-0 count. Okay, Quinton Colbertson came in only five walks all year. He's got two tonight flirting with a third. Here's a 3-0 to Rich. Low and away, and it's a four-pitch walk to load the bases. Coach John Waddle will come out, have a conversation with his pitcher. I would say it's probably, I mean, it's too early to to pluck them, I would think. And They've got a handful of other arms they could go with if they wanted, but I'm going to think in the bottom of the second. You're going to ride your horse a little bit more at least. Now, Coon Rapids Bears is a team. They've got a 1.96 ERA. They've got several other guys. They don't have anybody in their rotation with an ERA higher than four. There are a lot of 1A schools that cannot say that. They've got, you know, three guys with a sub two with at least 10 innings pitch. That being, obviously, Quentin Colbertson, Preston McAllister, and then Lance Claiborne. Well, the meeting of the minds is over. And it's a bases loaded opportunity for Lane Speaker, multi sports standout for the Cougars. I think most people probably think of him as a stud football player, also a state medalist in the long jump. First pitch popped up, foul out of play. It'll land behind us. And it's an 0 1 count. One zip cam here in the bottom of the second. It's Rolling Valley Conference. Battle, Coon Rapids Baird, 10 and 2 in conference action. Cam, 9 and 2. One of those losses to Coon Rapids Baird back on June 1st. The other one to Woodbine last week. As for CRB, they lost to Woodbine and Arweva in RVC play. Here's the 0 1 inside on speaker. Remember, the base is loaded. A walk would send a run across. 1-1 one, one the count. Brody Paulson. He's at third. Connor McKee at second. Colby Rich at first. That one's high. And it's a 2-1. Colbertson just struggling with command. Very uncharacteristic. Here's the 2-1. Speaker makes contact. That one is going to stay in the infield. Worst case scenario for Cam. Underneath it at second is McPreston McAllister. And there's two gone. And Lane Speaker goes down. Now here's Joe Kaufman. Up to the plate. Reached on a walk back in the first. Got stranded at second. Would love to help his own cause. It's uh, starting to cool down here in the knee of the sun. Coming down. I'm not going to lie. It's... Getting a little chilly. Maybe I should have brought a jacket. Not something that I'm usually anticipating in late June. First pitch to Kaufman. High and outside for a ball. One other count. Again, if you're just tuning in, Cam got one on in the first. They loaded the bases. They've got the bases loaded right now with two outs. As I say that, Kaufman sends a belt into left. It'll easily score one. They'll put the brakes on McKee. I think he probably could have made it. But they will score Paulson, so it's an RBI single for Joe Kaufman. Keeps the line moving. I say I think he could have made it, but I mean, what do I know? Connor McKee moves to third. Rich to second. Kaufman to first. And it's now two zip. Cam, they keep the line moving. It's Cade Tickner. He's the seventh hitter of this inning. Drew a walk back in the first. So 
Now Cam seeing Colbertson the second time that I Colbertson likewise to them as that one upstairs for a ball, one of the count. Two zip, bases loaded. Bottom of the second. The 1 0 from Colbertson to Tickner. Lunges at that one. It is drifting and will land in the glove of the shortstop. A lost side of it for a moment. Oswald gets underneath it. And that's how the end ends. So Cam once again leaves the bases loaded. They get one, though. Two zip through two here on Cam AFM. We're on Cam AFM. From large projects to daily tasks, we can help at Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. This is Josh, and we pride ourselves on quality products, knowledge, and service. We're always available for advice on the projects that take years to design or the issues that need fixed in a hurry. And we offer free estimates on anything and everything you need to complete both. When you have a demand, we offer the supply. Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. Nutrient Ag Solutions is your leading agricultural retailer of crop inputs and expert solutions. And they're your choice in the region for top-of-the-line products and customer service. When nothing short of the best is your standard, talk with Nutrient Ag Solutions in Westboro, Missouri, Coyne, Percival, and Essex, Iowa for fall application and products. Nutrient Ag Solutions, growing your crops and your bottom line. Welcome back to Anita here on Camp AFM 991. Clorinda Shenandoah, Trevor Mater here with you tonight. It is 2 0 Cam as we go to the third here on Cam AFM 991. Also, video streaming online at camaland.com. Fun night for baseball in the Rolling Valley Conference. A pair of state ranked squads. Cam coming in number seven at 15 and three. CRB. Number eight at 16 and four. They're also atop the Rolling Valley Conference, 10 and two for the Crusaders, nine and two for the Cougars. So we go to the third. Due up for CRB in this inning will be the 9-1-2 in Tanner Oswald, Easton Hayes, Preston McAllister. Anybody gets on base, Aaron McAllister will join the mix. So they'll work their way through the order a second time here. In this inning, here's the first pitch. In the dirt, did it? They're gonna say it hit him before it hit the dirt. So Oswald, a leadoff hit by pitch, takes one on the ankles, and up to the top of the order with Easton Hayes, who struck out to start things for the Crusaders tonight. Coon Rapids bared last year. Came in, I would say they probably had. Pretty high expectations for the season. They went 13 and 5. Because that one is inside on Hayes. Rolls to the backstop. Rich gets it, but not before Tanner Oswald is able to take second. In their season last year, ended with a 6 4 loss to Logan Magnolia in district play. 1-0 count to Hayes, and that was in a district semifinal. Hayes gets a piece of that one, fouls it back, brings it to a 1-1. So they went 13-5, lost to Logan Magnolia. Meanwhile, Cam last year, 15-3, went undefeated through a, a condensed Rolling Valley Conference schedule. Had a doozy of a game up here with Bedford in a district final. It was Lane Speaker against Brennan Seaford. Here's a 1-1, Hayes pops a bunt up foul. Brings it to a one and two. They won that one 5-4. Turn around, had to play St. Albert in a sub-state final in Clorinda with the trip to state on the line. They started out kind of hot. They led 3-1 going into the fifth. St. Albert put a six-burger on the board in the fifth. Ended up winning that game 9-5. But Cam returned basically everybody from that squad. As Kaufman's got a 1-2 to Easton Hayes. And Hayes... Swings it one high, and it hits the light pole along the right field line. I mean, that hit it right on the light. That, I don't think you, if you tried that 100 times, I don't think you'd be able to do that many times. And Cam did lose a couple contributors from last year. Jacob Holstein, Ben Tipkin, Nate Hensley. 
but returned a lot as well. That one is in there for, they call it a ball? I think they did. That was nicely framed by Rich. That's a 2-2 count. Joe Kaufman, five strikeouts tonight. Looks like nobody out. Here in the third with a runner at second. That one's in there for a strike, and there's a strikeout for Kaufman. His sixth of the night. Easton Hayes in what feels like a lengthy at-bat goes down, and it's Preston McAllister who reached on a walk. Back in the first inning up to the plate. Tanner Oswald at second after being hit by a pitch. That one off the glove of Rich. They will send Oswald to third standing. Now 90 feet away from cutting this deficit in half. One of the count. From Kaufman to Preston McAllister. The 1-0 high for a ball, 2-0. So Coffin's walked a couple, hit one. He's still got a no-hitter working so far through two and a third. I would say, though, the way the pitch count is trending, and I don't have those numbers privy to me off the top of my head, so that's foul back in a way. I don't, I don't keep track of pitch counts, but I would say he's probably not – not tracking towards being able to to go the distance, but what do I know? Been known to be wrong a time or two. Here's a 2-1 on its way to Preston McAllister. Tanner Oswald at third would love to cut this deficit in half for the Crusaders. The 2-1. Chopper to second. There is Hensley. The throw to first is in time to Tickner, but doing his job is Preston McAllister with the RBI on the sacrifice. And it's a one-run game. So Oswald scores. We go to the four-hitter. Aaron McAllister is catching tonight. He reached on a walk as well back in the first. Got stuck at first. Two-one cam. That one's outside for a ball. Coon Rapids Baird last time and they played very... Smart on the bases, able to move runners. That's something they're not afraid to do. Here's the 1-0 in the dirt and inside on McAllister. It's now a 2-0 count in his favor. McAllister, a stout wrestler for the Crusaders. Here's the 2-0. That one's upstairs. 3-0 now the count. So a big pitch for Kaufman. Down 3-0 in the count with two gone and nobody on here in the top of the third. The 3-0 in the dirt, ball four. And McAllister draws his second walk of the night. That'll bring Josh Ramirez, who was a strikeout victim in the first up to the plate. One of six strikeouts Kaufman's got to his tally so far this evening on this What's turning into a little bit of a cool night in Anita. The, the plate is shaded. And about 75% of the corner baselines are shaded. The middle infielders are still in the sun. We've got time as Ramirez will step out of the, the box. We've got a setup behind home plate just to the left. This, that one is fouled away by Ramirez. Didn't miss it by much along the third baseline. In the far corners, it's 310 here in Anita. It is 335 to left and right center, and if you knock one to center, it means you send it at least 345 feet, and they've got a shed on a hill. I'd say about, I don't know, from here it looks like maybe 25, 30 feet behind. Runner goes, throw inside, Rich the throw down the line to short to Speaker. Did he get him? Not quite. And running it out is McAllister, not by much though. Speaker did a good job of trying to apply the tag, but it's a stolen bag for Aaron McAllister. Nice throw by Rich, nice job by Speaker to come over, but a better job by McAllister to get under. 
And now if you're Grand Rapids Baron, you're just looking for that hit that could potentially tie this game. Ramirez might find it there. It will get down for a hit. They'll send him around. McAllister chugging, and it's a stand-up single for Josh Ramirez to tie this one up at two. Aaron McAllister had the wheels on and was moving fast. And we're knotted at two. We're two gone here in the top of the third. And up to the plate comes Lance Clayberg. Fun stuff here tonight, Nanita, and we're not even halfway home yet. Clayberg, a strikeout victim back in the first. That one high and upstairs, high and away for a ball, makes it a 1 0 count. Assuming Norton was in Greenfield tonight. Ottawa Valley took care of Southwest Valley softball. And a couple innings, as here's the 1 0 inside for no called strike. 1 1 the count. I'm sure he's on his way home, hopefully. Listening like all of you here on KMA FM 90 on 1, Clorinda Chandelier, and video streaming online, KMALand.com. A doozy in the Rolling Valley Conference tonight. It's a 1 1 count with two gone inside on Lance Clayberg. Brings it to a 2 1 count. Back-to-back -back knocks to prove it, and Gabe Obert, who struck out in the second, part of that clean frame of three strikeouts for Kaufman. They went down in the second. Actually, it was two strikeouts and a ground out. Beg your pardon. But nonetheless, Obert got a strikeout to his name tonight. Trying to get an RBI here. He sits on that one. It's a called strike. Still two gone. Here in the top of the third. Gabe Obert, I think when most people think of him, they think of basketball. Coach Corey Myers' squad. Here's the 0-1, high and outside for a ball. And it's a 1-1 count. To Obert with two gone. 1 1 to Obert in the dirt. Good job by Rich to keep it in front of him. It's a 2 1 count now. Again, runners on first and second. That being Ramirez at second, Clayberg at first. The 2 and 1 from Kaufman to Obert inside. Past Rich. Runners will move and the go ahead run for CRB now resides at third base in Josh Ramirez. And taking advantage of the opportunities in front of him. And it's a 3-1 offering coming up for Gabe Obert. I wonder if you're not taken. No, he's swinging. Foul. And now the count is full. So payoff pitch coming from Joe Kaufman to Gabe Ober. This will be a big one. I feel like either way, because ball here loads the bases with two gone. A strike gets out of this inning. Tied at two. Here's the 3-2. Inside, ball four. Bases juiced for CRB on the walk. And here comes Colby Colbertson, the, or no, Quentin Colbertson, rather. The eighth hitter of the evening or of the inning for the Crusaders, and you know he would love to give himself some insurance runs with kind of the way things have been up and down for him tonight on the bump. So now Coach Dan Doherty will come out and converse with his pitcher. The infield will come in, that being Colby Rich, who's catching. Kay Tickner is playing first. Seth Hensley at second. Lane Speaker at short. And Jack Fullman at third. Also in the outfield tonight for Lewis, or for Cam, is Ethan Fullman, Connor McKee, and Brody Paulson. 2-2. Two -two. Here in the top of the third. Cam got one out of the first, one out of the second. Since then, though, Coon Rapids Baird's been able to get two on in this inning. A sacrifice RBI from Preston McAllister. An RBI as well a coming just moments ago from Josh Ramirez. And... The runner at third is Ramirez with an opportunity to score if 
Culbertson can make contact. He sits on that one. It's a called strike. Owen won the count. So Owen won from Joe Kaufman to Quentin Culbertson in there for a strike. Owen to the count. Still 2-2 here on KMAFM 99-1. It's an 0-2 count. We'll get time called by Colbertson. He'll step out of the box, takes a practice hack, now steps back in. 0-2, two gone, bases stacked. And a 2-2 tie. Colbertson swings, misses. That's the seventh strikeout of the night for Kaufman. It leaves the bases loaded for Coon Rapids Bear, but not before they get two on two hits. We go to the bottom of the third. Two apiece here on KMAFM. KMAFM. America is choosing to be a healthier nation. That's why so many people choose a Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart Pharmacies are locally owned and offer a full range of vitamins, non-prescription medicines, cold remedies, and convenient items for you and your family. And when it comes time to have a prescription filled, you can always count on your Health Mart Family Pharmacy to do it right. Take your next prescription to Oakland Pharmacy in Oakland, a locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. OSI is considered a premier global food provider by many of the world's leading brands. OSI delivers leading-edge food solutions for product development as well as processing, and much of it is done from their Oakland, Iowa plant. Being a leader in the industry allows OSI Oakland to give back to the communities by sponsoring area high school events, offering special programs for veterans and other community outreach programs. To learn more, visit osigroup.com and search for the Oakland, Iowa location. Welcome back to Anita here on Cam AFM 99.1. Clorinda, Shenandoah, Trevor Mater here with you tonight. Also, we're video streaming online, camaland.com. Huge thanks to Levi's son for helping us out with that. We go to the bottom of the third in this tie game. State-ranked battle. It's Ethan Fullman, Seth Hensley, Jack Fullman. For Cam, it's the six, seven, eight hitters in the lineup. Quentin Colbertson still on the hill for Coon Rapids Baird. He's going to take his talents north to Majestic Aberdeen, South Dakota. That one gets away from Colbertson in the dirt. Brings it to a 1-0 count. Play baseball at Northern State. There's been a couple of Kim A. Landers that have gone on to play there in some sort of sport. As that's popped up foul by Hensley. Will it get out of play? It will. Just clear the fence. And Garrett Thompson of Logan Magnolia, the first one that comes to mind. When I think of Northern State, and actually the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Northern State is a heartbreaking loss they had to Northwest in a basketball regional this year. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That gets away, brings it to a 1-2 count. Also, Avery Blasdell of Glenwood. She's going to play soccer at Northern State if you are interested in that. Here's the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Hensley now on a 2-2 count. From Charlie, from Quentin Colbertson. Nobody out. Bottom of the third. 2-2 called strike three. Colbertson sends another one down. That is his fourth K of the night. Fullman goes down. Now here comes Seth Hensley up to the plate. Second time Fullman struck out. Hensley now trying to avoid his second strikeout of the night. One gone in there for a ball. One out of the count. Next one to Hensley. Chopped. Slow roller to second. Preston McAllister throw to Ramirez. There's two gone. Haven't had a lot of ground outs tonight. That's the first one Coon Rapids Barron's defense has been able to force. And then I think Cam had a 5-3 or 4-3. I'd have a look. It was a 5-3 on the sacrifice from McAllister earlier. That's been it. It's been a lot of strikeouts, a couple of flyouts. 
So here's the 0-2. Back to the, the eight hitter, Jack Fullman, who was also a strikeout victim. Back in the second inning. Good umpire and crew tonight, Bob Sweeney. Former Shenandoah and Atlantic administrator. Calling the balls and strikes. Here's the 0-1. It's low and away for a ball. 1-1 one one the count. Chris Johnson of Stanton on the base pass. He's had a handful of kids come through and be standout athletes for the Vikings. Here's the 1-1. One one. Hit in play. Drifting over and dropping for a single for Fullman as Obert came over. Hayes kind of came over as well from center, but they just let it drop, and it's a two-out single for Jack Fullman with the nine-hitter. Brady Paulson, who kind of sparked things. For the Cougars back in the second inning. Got out with a single, ended up scoring the run. That pushed their lead to 2-0. Well, they know CRB was going to claw back into this. Paulson sits on that one. Off the bag at first was Fullman. Slides back safely on the throw to Ramirez. Gets under the tag. Two got here in the bottom of the third of this unusually cool middle of June. I think today is like technically the first day of summer. As that one a strike on Paulson. And today is, well, yesterday was the first day of summer. So the second day of summer, one of the nicest days of the year. That one's in there for a strike. Kind of broke across the plate from the arm of Colbertson. And it's a 1-2 count from Quinton Colbertson to Brody Paulson with two gone, trying to get out of this inning unscathed. That one outside, 2-2 two, two the count. The infield beginning to become even more shaded. Here in Anita. That's chopped to second. Can't be fielded cleanly at second by McAllister. And getting on, I'm going to rule that an error, Brody Paulson. Moves Fullman to second. With two gone here in the bottom of the third of a 2-2 tie. Connor McKee, the leadoff hitter for the Cougars. Is up to the plate. Again, it is a 2-2 tie. The pitch. Swing and a miss. And it's a 1-1 one -one count. So one ball, one strike. From Quentin Colbertson to Connor McKee. We've, I believe if you're watching the camera video stream, we did lose it for a moment. Should be back up as that one's in there. First strike brings it to a 1-2 count. So one ball, two strikes. From Colbertson. To McKee. That one's inside, and it's now a 2-2 count. Runners on first and second, that being Jack Fullman at second, Brody Paulson at first. And the 2-2, Colbertson trying to get out of this inning unscathed on its way. Called strike three, he does so. And that's how the frame ends. A fifth strikeout from Quinton Colbertson tonight. Cam strands two more on the bases on one hit. We go to the fourth. It is 2-2 here on Cam AFM. Yeah. At PCSB, we believe in helping our customers and our community grow. And service is how we do it. This is about making banking better. We are here to serve. We have an innovative spirit and a heart for people that moves us to do what's right. Because at the end of the day, we know what matters most. Visit us online at wearepcsb.com. PCSB, we believe in you. 
Member FDIC. Many businesses talk about service, but at Rogers Pharmacy, it's not just talk, setting them apart from the big box stores. They're a full-service pharmacy where you can not only fill prescriptions, but they also carry an impressive line of medical equipment to meet all of your needs. So whether you need oxygen, CPAP, BiPAP, lift chairs, or diabetic shoes, Rogers Pharmacy has them all. Let their family serve your family. The full-service, family-owned, independent Rogers Pharmacy, located in Tarkio, Mount City, Maryville, and St. Joe. Visit RogersRx.com. When people ask me what my dad does, I still don't have exactly the right answer. This is Sadie, and my dad is Shane from Shop Ag. I know he takes calls and texts early in the morning and late at night. I know he does research to find the best products at the best prices. And I know he says, I'll get that done for you. But I guess I'm still not sure what all is involved in every aspect of agronomy. But I know my dad does it all. Call Shane at Shop Ag and see for yourself. 712-520-1333. We go to the fourth here on Cam AFM 99.1. Clarinda Shandoa, Trevor Mater here with you tonight. Also video streaming online, CamAland.com. Huge thanks to Levi Sun for helping us out with that throughout the summer. We've got a doozy to a piece here in this Rolling Valley Conference battle between a pair of state-ranked foes, Cam and Coon Rapids Baird. Starting things off for the Crusaders in the fourth, it's Colby Colbertson, Tanner Oswald, Easton Hayes. It's the 8-9-1 hitters. Poor coach John Waddle squatted already. Colbertson in a 1-1 count facing Joe Kaufman, the standout southpaw for Coach Dan Doherty's Cougars. The 1-1 from Kaufman to Colbertson. Outside part of the zone called strike. And it's a 1-2 count. From... Kaufman to Colbertson. That one's called strike three. Another one goes down. Another called strike three at that. Kaufman's been painting the corners. Anytime you do that, means you're, one, your catcher's doing a good job of, of placing it, and two, you're painting the corner as well. That is, by my count, the eighth strikeout of the night for Kaufman. Here's Tanner Oswald, who was hit by a pitch, scored a run. Back in the third inning for Coon Rapids Bear, they were able to get two across the tide. However, they had the bases loaded. Couldn't do anything with it after that. And Oswald swings at that one. That was up, and he was under it. It's an 0-1 count. Cam got one on the first, one on the second. CRB countered with two in the third. As Oswald almost went, pulls back on. Good thing he did it was inside for a ball. Just moments ago in the third, Cam had Cam had runners on first and second with two outs and couldn't do anything with it. Oswald belts one, diving play at second. It was not caught by Hensley, but he makes the throw to Tickner in time for the out. Hensley giving an A for effort on that one. But it will turn into a 4-3, and there's two gone now in this inning. Easton Hayes, who struck out twice, will come up, and now we we get to kind of that twilight zone of the night where if you're Joe Cobb and this is the third time you're facing a batter, and obviously if you're the batter, it's the third time you're facing a pitcher, something probably is going to give here at least on that first pitch, it's Easton Hayes tanking for an 0-1 count. Two gone, top of the fourth here to need a 2-2 to the score. That one chasing was Hayes. He had made up his mind he was going to swing, and it was in the dirt. Brings it to an 0-2 count, and Joe Kaufman one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Here's the 0-2. On its way, that was high for a ball. One, two, the count. So one ball, two strikes from Joe Kaufman to Easton Hayes. The one, two. On its way, rip just foul along the right field line. And 
And this will stay in a one two count. Joe Kaufman, so far tonight, eight strike counts on the evening. Charlie Colbertson willing and dealing in his own regard with five. Here's a one two to uh, Hayes, upstairs for a ball, two to the count. Here in the tap of the fourth. So two balls, two strikes. From Kaufman to Hayes, uncaught third strike, throw down the line to first in time, Rich to Tickner, and that's how the inning ends with the ninth strikeout of the night for Joe Kaufman. It's a clean frame, three up, three down, three dud. We go to the bottom of the fourth, 2-2 two -two here on KMAFM. Hi, it's Alexis with Sugar Makery. At Sugar Makery, we're all about making life sweeter in our treats, in our gift arrangements, and of course, in our customer service. We believe that life is made sweeter by giving back to the communities that give so much support to us, and that's why we're proud to be part of this programming. We hope you'll allow us to tempt your taste buds or help with your next customized gift arrangement very soon. Find us on Sharp Street in Glenwood and Conifer Lane in Council Bluffs and at SugarMakery.com. At the ARC Group, we take a disciplined approach to marketing. We understand that education and experience must be at the forefront of your decision-making process, and we also understand that all farms manage risk differently. This is Tim again with the ARC Group. I would like to meet with you, learn about your operation, understand your short and long-term goals, and then together we form a plan to maximize profitability on your farm. Call me at 712-370-3497 or visit us at agrisconsulting.net. Well, welcome back to Anita here on Cam AFM 991. Clorinda, Shenandoah, Trevor Rand here with you tonight. We're also video streaming online, CamAland.com. Hope you're watching. Hope you're listening. Hope you're enjoying it. If you are, feel free to let us know. We look forward to continuing to do these video streams. Huge thanks to Levi Sun for helping us get this rolled out this summer. We'll continue to do them throughout the regular season. Unfortunately, we cannot during the postseason. But then hopefully come... Fall sports time will have you set as well. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Do up for Cam in this inning. It is the heart of the lineup. Colby Rich, Lane Speaker, Joe Coffin. When they've got things going tonight, this has been where. Quentin Colbertson now facing them for a third time. Rich sits on that one for a ball. Brings it to a 2 0 count. Rich tonight a double and has drawn a walk. He is. Bolstering that on base percentage. Here's the 2 0. Takes a hack at one that was kind of up and in, and it's a 2 1 count. Earlier on tonight on KMA 960, Austin McNorton had a Pride of Iowa Conference softball battle. Not only Valley got a 13 to 1 win over Southwest Valley. That one's in there for a ball on Colby Rich. Baseball action right now. I can't Manning down 2 1 to trainer. Max Nielsen just homer though for the Wolves. Here's a 3 1 from Colbert's into Rich. It's another walk. Rich going to boost it on base percentage just a little bit more. Third time he's got on the bags tonight. And Lane Speaker, who's got an RBI to his name, will come up. It's one for two, an RBI, and a fly out. Nobody out. Tab of the fourth, 300 need up. One upstairs and in, and it's a 1 0 count. Defensively tonight for Coon Rapids Bear, Quentin Colbertson pitching, Aaron McAllister catching, Josh Ramirez at first. Preston McAllister at second, Tanner Oswald at short, Lance Clayberg at third. As that is belted to center by Speaker. That is back. That is back. That is gone. Who homered? Lane Speaker homers tonight. And that is his fifth shot of the season. It's a two-run blast to give Cam a 4-2 to two lead. He'll be greeted by his teammates. And the Bash Brothers for the Cougars come through once again. It's now 4-2. to two. A speaker goes yard here in the fourth. We'll see how Colbertson can 
can battle back. Joe Coffin now up to the plate. Coffin got on base earlier. That one outside for a ball. So Cam now with a 4-2 lead. Lane Speaker has drove in three of the four runs tonight for Cam. It's a 2-0 count to Joe Coffin. He singled reach on a walk. He drove in a run as well. He's got the other run tonight. Kaufman sits on that one. It's a called strike. Brings it to a two and one count. When that left the bat from Lane Speaker, you you had a good idea that you know as calm as it is, that might carry. As Kaufman sits on that one, brings it to a two two count, and it did. It went over left center. It's three forty five. It went over more like center. It's three forty five to center. It didn't. Looked like it had much trouble clearing. Here's a 2-2 low. McAllister tried to bring it up, but it's a 3-2 count from Quentin Colbertson to Joe Kaufman. 4-2 cam after Lane Speaker's two-run blast moments ago. The payoff pitch. Kaufman chops one along the first baseline. Ramirez will underhand scoop to Colbertson, who came off the bag, and Kaufman reaches safely. I'm not sure if it was a throw or what, but Colbertson got moved off the bag. And Coach Waddle wanted an explanation. And he gets it. Now Kane Tickner comes up to the plate. Tickner, so far tonight, over one reach on a walk, sits on that one for a strike. So speaker homer in this inning, then Joe Coppin follows it by running one out. Here's the 0-1, that was up. Tickner thought about it for a moment, decides not to. And it's a one and one count. And if you're just tuning in, Lane Speaker moments to go with the two run blast. Is that one swung on a miss by Tickner? And Kaufman had a little bit of a lead at first, gets back safely before Ramirez can do anything with the throw down from McAllister. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. And the one-two from Colbertson, lunging was Tickner. It's an uncount third strike, but since there's a runner on first, he can't go. So Colbertson gets his sixth strike count of the night. There's one away. Up comes Ethan Fullman, who's unfortunately for him been on the end of two of those six strikeouts from Colbertson. Seth Hensley awaiting on deck. One gone, one on. 4-2 cam in the bottom of the fourth. Hensley just gets a piece of one, fouls it back to the fence, right here are my feet. Okay, they've got a set up behind home plate here at Cam, just to the left of the home plate. If you're watching at home, you're almost dead center with home plate. Here's the 0-1 from Colbertson to Fullman on the upper end of the bat. Sends that one into right. Obert in pursuit underneath it. There's two gone. And Seth Hensley steps up to the dish. He's 0 for 2 tonight, a strikeout and a 4-3 ground out back in the third. Joe Kaufman still resigning at first. Colbertson would love to go into the fifth, only down two. First pitch to Hensley. That one just misses. Looked like it was going to break late, but... Not enough, and it's a 1-0 count. Jack Fullman waiting on deck for Cam. Here's the 1-0. Fullman pops one up. In pursuit is McAllister, and that's how the inning will end, but not before Cam gets two. 
On a blast from Lane Speaker, we've played four, four two Cam here on Cam AFM. AFM. Sports teach our children important life lessons, like how to work together as a team and the importance of a great coach. TS Prosperity Group, a division of TS Bank, understands the importance of a successful team, especially when it comes to your finances. Let TS Prosperity Group be the coach of your financial team to help guide you to success with the goal of sleeping better, knowing your prosperity is protected for the next generation. Contact TSProsperityGroup.com to schedule your free 30-minute consultation today. Seeing is believing. That's what you'll hear from customers that choose Barrett Auto Center of Glenwood time and time again. Barrett customers come in for vehicles and service work, but they come back for conversation and honest advice. They want one of the largest pre-owned and fully serviced inventories in KMA land, and they return when they've gone elsewhere, and it just isn't the same. See and believe for yourself how little differences add up to a better car buying experience. Come back to Barrett's and BarrettsAutoCenter.com. Fifth inning fun here at Anita. It's Preston McAllister, Aaron McAllister, Josh Ramirez. Do up for Coon Rapids Baird in this inning. If anybody gets on, Lance Clayberg will get a plate appearance as well. 4-2 to two Cam leading this Rolling Valley Conference battle. It is a battle of state-ranked foes. And Cam assistant coach Steve Pelzer came out of the dugout. Went and got Coon Rapids Baird coach John Waddle. And now they're going. Maybe Pelzer just came over to a chat with him about something because Waddle's going to go to the third base box. But Pelzer came over and wanted to have some sort of count. And it could just be something simple, too, is confirming the pitch count. Is the first one to Preston McAllister is a swinging strike. A one on the count. Joe Coffin. The South Bob and Stellar tonight for the Cougars. Puts that one inside, though. It's a ball. Coffin. Nine strikeouts to his name tonight. A 4 2 Cam lead in line for the win right now, thanks to his buddy Lane Speaker. Here's a 1 1 upstairs and in. It's a 2 1 count. Reminder, coming up tomorrow night, we've got a fun one of the Western Iowa Conference and softball action. We'll be in Avoca, Logan Magnolia, HSW, going to do battle. The 2-1 in the dirt. Did it hit the ankles? It did. So off the ankles of McAllister, he'll wear that one and move down the line to first. Aaron McAllister now up to the plate. He has drawn a, walk. He's drawn a couple of walks tonight, actually. So he's... Actually, 0 for 0. Two walks down. That's one way to bolster the on base percentage. So, leadoff runner on here in the fifth for Coon Rapids Baird. Kaufman gets the pitch selection he wants from Rich now. Launches a first one. Nicely put in there for a strike. 0 1 the count. So, we've got. HSTW Logan Magnolia from Avoca tomorrow in softball. Then Wednesday, I've got a fun one in the Wick. Again, this time on the baseball side with trainer Tri Center from Neola. It's the 0-1 inside and low. It's a 1-1 count. And then Thursday, the man, the myth, the legend that is Derek Martin will have a Hawkeye 10 softball clash from Clorinda Creston taking on Clorinda. We're nearing the postseason. Here's a 1-1. Swing and just fouled away by Aaron McAllister. The postseason for softball slated to begin July 6th. For baseball, get a couple of first round games on the 9th and really kind of the, the bulk of it will begin on the 10th, and both these teams learned what their path to the state tournament looks like this year. Here's the 1-2 inside. Leading away from that one is Aaron McAllister. You know, both these teams just have to take a short drive up the road this year to if they're to make the state tournament with it being played in Carroll. I mean, Coon Rapids Barrett, it would be a very short drive. And, I mean, from Anita to Carroll isn't very far either. Here's a 2-2 to McAllister. Had him chasing, uncomp third strike. 
He should get to first safely, and he will. And no, they say it was fouled. Or was it? Did they get Ramirez out? I think they did. Now, if a runner is at first, I don't think he can go. But he ran like he could. There's not a runner on first, so I think kind of common sense has prevailed here. That's going to go in the books, a strikeout and one gone. Yeah, I thought that was weird when Preston McAllister moved down the line to second. And McAllister took a beeline to first. But, again, if there's a runner occupying a base, you can't. You can't go. Now, Preston McAllister is able to take second because it was it was dropped. Nonetheless, here's Josh Ramirez up to the plate with one gone. Here in the fifth, he sits on that one. It's inside the zone just barely for a strike, and it's a 0-1 count. Let's see if we can pull up the postseason baseball assignments in Class 1A. Coon Rapids Bear got a very interesting draw in their district. Is checked swing. Ramirez didn't go. Are they going to say went? No, they're going to say didn't go. So it's a 1 1 count. So Coon Rapids Bear is in a district with Baxter, Collins, Maxwell, Colo, Nesco, Earlham, Glenn Ralston, Madrid, and Ogden. 1 1, swing and a miss. And it's a 1 2 count on Josh Ramirez. Now, on the flip side of that, they've got AGWSR, BCLUW, Clarksville, Dunkerton, Gladbrook, Rhinebeck, GMG, Garwin, Grundy Center, and Janesville. Here's the 1 2 to Ramirez. Just gets a piece of it foul. Lance Clayberg, who's on deck, grabs it on a hop. As for Cam, they're in a district with Bedford, East Union, Griswold, Lennox, Natalie Valley, Orient, Maxburg, and Southwest Valley. I would say the way things are trending, Cam is probably, they should be the one seed in that, I'd imagine. On the flip side of their district is here's the one, two, swing and a miss, uncomp third strike, though. And the throw down the line that time is, Ramirez could take a bag is in time from Rich to Tickner, and that is the 11th strikeout for Joe Kaufman tonight. So Lance Clayberg comes up to the plate. Now for Cam on the flip side of that district, East Mills, Xyra Elkhorn, Kimbleton, Essex, Fremont Mills, Riverside, Sydney, St. Albert, Stanton. Now, if you had to, to make a you know, prediction, you would say that you know the stars have aligned for a potential Cam St. Albert Substate final rematch potentially, but got to get there first. Here's Lance Clayberg with two gone in the top of the fifth. Joe Kaufman has been wheeling and dealing on the mound tonight. He's got 11 strikeouts. Wayne Speakers drove in three to help him, and it's a 4 2 Cam lead. Clayberg swings at that one, and it's an 0 1 1 count. Cam 15 and 3, Coon Rapids Barron 16 and 4. CRB looking for 11th win in the RVC. Cam looking for their 10th. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Pop foul along the right field line. Tickner came over from first, but it's a well out of play. And it's a 1-2 count. Kaufman. Now one strike. Away from his 12th K of the night. Lance Clayberg with a 1-2 here in the fifth. On its way just outside for a ball. I'm not sure what the pitch count is up to for Kaufman. Now he can go. Believe him being a sophomore. There's a 2-2 on its way inside for a ball. Fills the count and gives me a chance also to try to find in my notes about the pitch count rule. Kaufman, being a sophomore, should be able to go 110. 
And he gets another strikeout there. That is his 12th of the night. Down goes Clayberg. Three strikeouts for Kaufman in that inning. It's 4-2. Cam, we go to the bottom of the fifth here on Cam AFM 99-1. Bedford Drug offers more than just your prescriptions. They are now providing immunizations, including flu, pneumonia, and shingles vaccinations. Plus, they offer prescription synchronization for your convenience. Stop in and visit with pharmacist Mike Schweitzer for more information. See their expanded gift selection, too. Convenient, competitive prices, and people willing to help. Just a few reasons that Bedford Drug is the pharmacy with more for you. Get professional and experienced advice on the spot. Bedford Drug on Main Street in Bedford. For over 25 years, Chad Mobility has provided you the latest technology, competitive prices, and a nationwide high-speed network. Though important, for a whole lot more. We serve your hometown community, sponsor your local chambers and events. It's our goal to work hard while giving back to those who graciously support us. At Chad Mobility, our interests are much deeper than providing great service. We're just committed to serving you. To learn more, see us at chatmobility.com today. Welcome back to Anita. We go Welcome to the to bottom of the fifth. The it is 4 2 Cam leading. Our Cam AFM 991 and video is streaming online, CamAland.com. Do up for the Cougars in this inning. Is there 8 9 1 hitters in Jack Fullman, as well as Brody Paulson and Connor McKee? And Connor McKee. Fullman 1 for 2 tonight, a single, a strikeout. A strikeout. Steps into the box. Quentin Colbertson on the bump for Cougar Rapids Barrett tonight. He's given up six strikeouts. And swinging at the first pitch is full, and he puts it out of play. Along the left field line, there's Owen won the count. Owen won the count. Well, A.J. Schultz went deep for trainer again just moments ago, and then also... Also, moments ago in softball action, as that one's high on Fullman for a 1 1 count. Izzy Blummel of Riverside went deep. And if you're out of game and somebody sends one over the fence, feel free to hashtag who homer. Is a swing and a miss by Fullman to bring it to a 1 2 count. Feel free to hashtag who homered and tag myself at Treadmater96 or Derek Martin. At D2, Mart. at D2 Mart as well. The 1-2 well. well. from Colbertson to Fullman. From Colbertson to Fullman. Just gets a piece of it as Fullman. It hit the awkward part of the bat it looked hit like. The awkward and part of the bat it looked like. And keeps the at-bat alive. Keeps the at-bat alive. Both these teams trying to, Both these get, teams into trying to get into tip-top shape as the postseason looms. So. The postseason looms. So. Have a district seating meeting sometime district next week. Sometime next week. Whoever wins this one would have a. Whoever wins this one would have a. Their feather in the cap is chasing. The cap is chasing was Fullman. It was dropped, but McAllister promptly applies the tag, and Colbertson gets his seventh strike out of the night. And it's a nine hitter. Brody Paulson up to the plate. Oh, one for oh, one for one tonight. Actually, reach on error as well. Back in the third. Back in the third. 4 2 Cam. You're on Cam AFM 90 on one tonight. Cam AFM 90 on one tonight. Skolbertson. Skolbertson. Launches the first pitch in there for a strike. It is a cool. It is a cool. Knight in Anita. Knight in Anita. But I will not. Will not complain. I will not complain. That one's there for ball. It's, I mean, it's 63, so it's not even really cool. It's just not what you expect for the second day of summer. 1-1 one, one the count with one gun. 1-1 one, one the count with one gun. From Quentin Colbertson. From Quentin Colbertson. To Brody Paulson. To Brody Paulson. So the 1-1. One, one. So the 1-1. One, one. Hit off the end of the bat. Slow roller to second. The throw to Ramirez is there from McPreston McAllister. And there's two gone here in the fifth. We go back to the top of the order. Connor McKee, one for three tonight with a single strikeout and a flyout. Hey, Trying to keep this frame going. Quentin Colbertson in line for a pretty tough luck loss. Looks like up the tally. I've got him, I think, five, six, seven hits. 
is what he's given up tonight. Here's the first pitch to McKean. Breaking ball doesn't break. It's a 1-0 count. Meanwhile, Kaufman has only given up a couple of hits tonight. I believe two, and those were both in the third. Next one to McKee. Misses outside for a ball. So 2-0 the count from Colbertson to McKee. McKee takes on that one, brings it to a 3-0. Defensively for CRB, Quentin Colbertson pitching Aaron McAllister, catching Josh Ramirez at first, Preston McAllister at second, Tanner Oswald at short, Lance Clayberg at third. But 3-0 from Colbertson to McKee. Called strike, and it's a 3-1 count. Colby Colbertson is in left. Easton Hayes in center. Gabe Obert in right. This was two-zip cam going into the third. As McKee swings and misses, and that's strike two to fill it up. It was two-zip going to the third. CRB got two on a couple of singles that kept the line moving. Cam, though, Homer from Speaker gave him a 4-2 lead moments ago. Now that one fouled away by McKee. Keeps the count alive at 3-2. and two. This one's been as good as advertised so far tonight. I've been, I'd say I've been pretty spoiled so far this year. Here's a 3-2 offering from Colbertson to McKee. It's going to run track at Central Missouri next year. The payoff pitch chasing, swinging, missing. Colbertson, his eighth strikeout of the night. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Cam clinging to a 4-2 lead here on Cam AFM. Cam AFM. Find your place at Northwest Missouri State University. From day one, experience a university like no other. In the classroom, you'll find career-ready academic programs and hands-on learning. Not to mention championship sports teams and clubs. Find your passion and your people. Plus, textbooks and a fully loaded laptop are included in your tuition. With $19 million in scholarships and aid available. They also have a 97% placement rate. Visit nwmissouri.edu to apply today. Northwest Missouri State University, where Bearcats connect. Lows level off around 54 tonight under mainly clear skies. Winds out of the southeast around 5 miles per hour. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Tomorrow, chance for scattered thunderstorms. Highs level off around 86. Chance of scattered thunderstorms again tomorrow night. Lows dip down to about 64. Clear skies and quiet. Temperatures a bit above average Wednesday and Thursday with highs in the upper 80s. Chance for scattered thunderstorms Thursday. I'm weatherology meteorologist Laura Lockwood on KMA. Right now, 70. Welcome back to Anita here on Cam AF the 90 on one Clorinda Shenandoah video streaming as well. Online CamAland.com Trevor Mater here with you tonight on the call. Levi Sun making sure the video stream up and running. We go to the six and it is a 4-2 Cam lead. They've made a call to the bullpen. Colby Rich will come in and relieve Joe Kaufman's night. On the bump appears to be done. What a night it was for him. What a night it was for him. Got him two hits. Got him two hits. Twelve strikeouts. Twelve strikeouts. You will take that. You will take that. As Rich will warm up a little bit, and we'll get you the numbers on him now. With Rich pitching, they had to make a change catching as well. Looks like that will be. Pull up the roster here. Be able to tell you it's Ethan Fullman pitching. Or Ethan Fullman catching, rather. So they moved the defense all around. We'll try to get that sorted out for you. So Joe Kaufman goes five innings, 12 Ks, and two hits allowed. And the first batter that Colby Rich will face will be Gabe Ober. It's in there for a strike. Now, Kaufman also walked a handful. It's like three, four. Hit two. Is that swinging and missing is Obert. To get himself behind on the count. Oh, two. So, Colby Rich, who's no slouch of his own, puts that one low and away for a ball, brings it to a one-two count. On Gabe Obert. 
That one low for a ball, and it's a 2-2 count. So Colby Rich this year. You know, we talked as there's a ball in the dirt. Brings it to a 3-2 count, been raking at the plate. He's got a 4.9 ERA. 4-0 record, though. And 28 strikeouts. Opponents only hitting 102 against him. So, you know, with the ERA, that shows that there's opportunities. And teams have been able to, when they get those opportunities, capitalize. But, you know, with the hitting 102, there's not been a ton of them. Ethan Fullman is catching. I imagine they did the double hook and put Kaufman out on the left. That's what it looks like from here. Here's the 3-2 in play to Speaker at short. On a run, the throw to Tickner. Got him. And there's one gone. Very emphatic out call from Chris Johnson on the base pass. Down goes Obert. Quentin Colbertson now up to the plate. With one away. Colbertson 0 for 2 and had a couple of strikeouts. First pitch. Popped up. Speaker coming way up near the hill to get it. He does. And there's two gone with Colby Colbertson. Up to the plate for the Crusaders with two gone in this frame. Goldbertson for two tonight. Pops that one up. Speaker again. Busy this inning. Comes up underneath it. That's how the frame ends. So it was a 6-3 and F6 and F6 and a clean frame. And Colby Rich's first inning on the mound tonight. We go to the bottom of the 6 4 2 Cam here on KMAFM. KMAFM. This is Kane with Gowing Plumbing. Gowing Plumbing is the name to remember for 24 hour service. That includes after hours and weekends because that is when problems usually occur. We're located in Shenandoah, but we also serve the surrounding communities. That's the way it's been done for more than 70 years. And we work on boiler heat. So call fully licensed Gowing Plumbing any time of day or night, 246-1803 or after hours at 712-310-9248. HawkeyeFord.com. It's where you'll find a complete selection of pre-owned cars and trucks. It's also where you can estimate your trade-in value and receive a no-hassle quote. Since 1988, Hawkeye Ford has been offering a high level of customer service and a commitment to making the process of buying your vehicle an enjoyable one. They strive to deliver 100% satisfaction every time you visit their location on Highway 34 east of Red Oak or on their 24-7 location, HawkeyeFord.com. Well, we go to well, the bottom of the six. Cam going to try to add some insurance runs here on Cam AFM 99.1. Clorinda Shando also video streaming online, CamALand.com. Trevor Mater here with you tonight. Levi's son helping with the video stream. It is 4-2 Cam, and we've got a pitching change for Coon Rapids Baird as well. Taking to the bump will be Jalen Rosenbeck, a senior. He's a lefty. He has not logged any pitches so far this year. But he is warming up right now. Looks like Quentin Colbertson's night is done. In line for a tough luck loss. Rosenbeck didn't pitch last year either. So Colbertson gave up eight hits. He struck out eight. And it's the tap of the order, the 2-3-4 in the order for Cam with Colby Rich, Lane Speaker, and Joe Kaufman. Again, trying to maybe give themselves a little bit more of a cushion. Heading into the tap of the seventh where Coon Rapids Barrett's going to rely on the 9-1-2 of Tanner Oswald, Easton Hayes, and Preston McAllister. So Rosenbeck, kind of a hunch stance, puts that one inside on Rich, who's 
One for one tonight with the doubles. John, a couple locks, scored a couple runs. The 1 1. Swing and a miss. Rich was chasing low. And it's a 1 1 count now. So you have Jalen Rosenbeck seeing his first action of the season as that one misses upstairs for a ball. And it's a 2 1 count. Rosenbeck didn't toss any last year. The 2 1 is in there for a ball. 3 and 1. Didn't toss any in 2018 either. So we're uh, kind of riding, riding blank on Jalen Rosenbeck as far as you know what to expect. And Rich sends one to left. And underneath it is Fullman or. Actually, that would be Colbertson for CRB, but that one, man, when it left the bat, it made a cool sound, but it just didn't carry. And Colby Rich is the second out, the first down of this inning. And now up comes up to the plate comes Lane Speaker, and we know he uh, homered back in the Fourth inning, a two-run shot that gave Cam the lead. I went almost to dead center. If you've never been to the ballpark here in Eda, it's 345 to center. They've got a shed that's a little ways back in the trees. So that one is outside for a ball, makes it a 2-0 count. So I'd say, yeah, to, to get it to the shed, you'd probably have to go 375. I can't really tell from here because I'm looking straight at it. But I mean, when it left the bat, it looked like a no-doubter. As he sits on that one, it is a called strike inside part of the zone, Bob Sweeney says. And it's a 2-1 count. Rosenbeck, again, kind of a hunch stance. Launches that one outside, 3-1 and one on Lane Speaker. 4-2 Cam here in the bottom of the six. One gone, the Cougars. And then it's still Colbertson pitching. It's Colby Colbertson pitching. So it's not I don't know where the Rosenbeck came from. Maybe it was last year's roster I was looking at, but it's Colby Colbertson pitching. I pulled up last year's stats at one point. Colby Colbertson with a 3-2 gets a walk on Lane Speaker. That's kind of embarrassing. But Speaker takes the bag and brings Joe Kaufman up to the plane. With one gun. And Jalen Rosenbeck was, was a senior last year. So I'd, I'd went to look at a, a stat from last year and I saw number two and I thought that didn't sound right. But Colby Colbertson who kind of been quiet tonight, playing in left and hadn't had much going offensively. So comes into pitch. Owen won the count on Joe Kaufman. That one's in the dirt, and it's a 1-1 count. So Speaker got on with a walk moments ago. Now Kaufman, who's got a couple of singles to his name tonight. There's a throw down the line to first. Ramirez keeps Speaker honest. One, one, one gun, and I can't give you numbers on Colby Colbertson. 11 innings pitch, runner goes. Speaker could be out, but the throw hopped, and he slides safely after McAllister's throw to second. So give Lane Speaker a stolen bag. So Colby Colbertson, 11 innings, a 2.5 ERA. He struck out 14. And the scoreboard is. Lots of juice right now here, and now they got it back up. One, two, one gone. Throw gets by McAllister, moves Speaker to third now. And it's a 2-2 two -two count. So Colby Colbertson, a freshman, again, kind of has a hunched, a little bit of a hunched stance. Lefty gets that one foul tipped by Kaufman. So lefty against lefty in this one. 
Cade Chickner waiting on deck for Cam. One gone. The Cougars trying to add an insurance run. Or a couple here in the six. Here's the uh, 2-2 two -two into left. Coming over and making the catch. Here's the left fielder. It was Quentin Colbertson in there. And it wasn't deep enough for Speaker to, to justify going. And there is now two gone. And that is Lance Clayberg playing in left. So they've moved their, moved their lineup all sorts of around with Quentin Colbertson coming off the the bump. It looks like they've got Preston McAllister at third. Clayberg at third. Colby Colbertson pitching. I wonder if Quentin isn't at second where Preston was. Is that one's a ball to Kane Tickner. Two gone here in the bottom of the six. 4-2 Cam leading Coon Rapids Bear the state ranked battle. Tickner chases that one, and it's a strike. Brings it to a 1-1 count. Tickner tonight, 0 for 2. Strike out, a fly out, and a walk. The 0-2, swing and a miss. And it's a 1-2 now. now. Both these teams will turn around and focus on what's next for them for CRB, that's Woodbine on Wednesday as Tickner checked swing, didn't go. It's a called ball to bring it to a 2-2. Now Cam, their next game is Glidden Ralston on Wednesday. They'll make the trip up north to, I don't know if they play in Glidden or Ralston. I don't know football, at least they used playing Glidden. Here's the 2-2, swing and a miss. And Colbertson gets a strikeout. Cam can't add any insurance runs. They strand a runner at third. CRB needs... Two runs to tie it as we go to the seventh. It's our 9-1-2 coming up here in a moment on KMAFM. On KMAFM. Iowa Western Community College has important news for you. If you're a high school senior trying to figure out what your next step in life will be after high school, consider this. Students learning trade-specific skills will get you into the workplace quicker, making a good living and having a lot less college debt. Iowa Western offers one- to two-year programs in nursing, welding, industrial tech, and advanced manufacturing, plus many others. Great skills and great pay in less time. Talk to Iowa Western Community College in Clarinda and Shenandoah and start planning your future now. Why choose Malvern Bank? Because Malvern Bank is an education bank. Malvern Bank provides online informative resources and teaches folks like me financial literacy. Malvern Bank takes the time to answer your money questions on the phone, in person, or online. As an education bank, we want our customers to be mindful about money. To become a Malvern Bank customer, visit their website at malvern.bank. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Malvern Bank. We build community. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Anita here on Cam AFM 991, Clorinda, Shenandoah, and video streaming online, CamALand.com. It's a state-ranked battle in the Rolling Valley Conference. Going to the seventh, a two-run game. Cam leading Coon Rapids, Baird 4-2. Tanner Oswald, Easton Hayes, and Preston McAllister. Two up for the Crusaders in this inning. They need two to tie it, three to take the lead. Aaron McAllister. The cleanup hitter in this inning. Colby Rich came in to pitch in the sixth inning for Cam. Was able to really trust his defense. They went 6-3, F6, F6. In that frame... That one's a strike. From Rich to Hayes. That one's actually it's Rich to Oswald in the dirt for a ball. Brings it to a 2-1 count. 4-2 Cam leading. Lane Speaker's homer. Earlier the difference makers. That one's high and inside. That was back in the fourth. Colby Rich started the inning with a leadoff walk. The speaker sent a shot to center. That one's fouled along the left field line by Oswald and Coach John Waddle in the 
third baseline. Had to kind of move out of the way of it. 3-2 on its way from Rich to Oswald. Rich trying to muscle another save here. Misses high, and it's a leadoff walk for Tanner Oswald. That'll bring up Easton Hayes. He's the leadoff hitter. For the Crusaders in their lineup, he's 0 for 3 tonight, though, with all three coming via strikeouts. However, those were all against Kaufman. This is his first time facing Colby Rich tonight. He'll throw over to first, but getting back safely was Oswald. Tickner at first. Ethan Fullman catching. He started the game at left, but he came in to catch when Rich moved to pitch for Kopp, and that one broke in. It's a called strike. And it's an 0-1 count from Colby Rich to Easton Hayes. One gone, or one on, nobody gone, I should say. Here's the 0-1 now. Inside, Fullman keeps it in front of him. That keeps Oswald at first. And it's a 1-1 count. Cam got one on the first, two on the second. Coon Rapids Baird got two on the third to tie it. Cam had bases loaded in both the first and second innings. Only got one run in each of those frames. So here's the 1-1 to Hayes. Up and in. Runner goes. Throw to speaker. On a hop. Can't get there in time. And Tanner Oswald moves to second. Throw was a little wide of the bag. Oswald moves 90 feet closer. Nobody out. Coon Rapids Baird trying to trying to scratch a comeback here in Anita tonight. That one low and inside. It's a 3-1 count in favor of Easton Hayes, and I wonder right now needing, needing base runners if you're not taking all the way. The 3-1. Nope, check swing. And it's a foul ball strike. You got, I think you got the end of the bat on the check swing, and it's a full count. This would be a big strikeout for Colby Rich if he can find a way to maneuver this one. The payoff pitch from Colby Rich to Easton Hayes. Rolled to first. Can't be fielded cleanly by Tickner. Bobbled it a couple times, and CRB's got runners on the corners. That's a hard hit. I don't really know if you rule that an error or not, but I'm going to rule it an error for now. Easton Hayes gets on with a single. Preston McAllister now up. Runners on the corners. Hayes representing the tying run. Here at the top of the seventh. Cam trying to get that 16th win of the year. Their 10th in the RVC. And in the process, give themselves a half game lead as well. One is out for a ball, and it's a 1-0 count on Preston McAllister, who tonight had a walk, a 5-3 sack, and a hit by pitch. So he's been creative tonight. He'll call time. Now he steps back into the box, and it's ready to go. Colby Rich trying to work the save. Runners on the corners. Nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Shows bump, pulls back, runner goes. The throw from Fullman wide of the bag. Speaker loses it for a moment. And Easton Hayes takes second. Tanner Oswald now at third. And the tying run moves 90 feet closer. Looks like Fullman going to call time. Head coach Dan Doherty will come out. I wonder if they won't intentionally... I mean, I wouldn't think you're going to intentionally walk. But he's going to come out. He's going to have a conversation with Rich. Bring the infield in. A 2-0 count right now to Preston McAllister. Again, the infield coming in for... 
Cam. It's 4-2 here in the top of the seventh. The meeting of the minds on the mound is over. And we'll await a 2-0 count to Preston McAllister. Rich with the 2-0 in there for a strike. They need that bad. They get it. It's a 2-1. Either way, Cam's going to get in their shot if, if CRB is able to tie this or take the lead. I mean, they're going to get a rebuttal, so I mean, if that, you don't want to get to that. Obviously, you'd like to get out of this now if you can. Here's the two-one from Rich to McAllister, slow roller, throw it home on the tag is the, no. They got underneath it. They, had, I think Fulman might have lost it for a moment. Oswald slides in. It's a fielder's choice that allows McAllister to reach, and it's a one-run game. That that one kind of. On the roll just died. Rich had a tough decision to make. He threw to Fullman. Fullman trying to get Oswald. Oswald gets under the tag. He scores. Easton Hayes goes to third. Preston McAllister is now the go-ahead run on a fielder's choice at first. And up comes Aaron McAllister, who is... Drawn two walks and struck out tonight. Those were all against Kaufman, though. McAllister swinging. Oh, he fell down foul. He might have taken that off the shin. I think he... If it wasn't the ball off the shin, it was a bat. He's stepping off the, the bag. and I mean, he is coming up. He is a little gimpy. He'll look down the third baseline. Coach John Waddle will give him some signals, but you gotta wonder though now, anything in play, you know, how how well can he run it out? Can Aaron McAllister? I mean it might not matter though either. If you score a run, it ties it now. Throw lob over to first. Keeps Preston McAllister on. Still nobody out. Here in the tap of the seventh. This is not kind of smooth as Cam would have liked. Now, Aaron McAllister will call time again. He drew a walk in the first, drew a walk in the third, stole a bag, scored a run, and then struck out in the fifth. 4-3 Cam here in the top of the seventh. An 0-1 count from Colby Rich to Aaron McAllister. Inside, Easton Hayes, who reached on air, sits at third. And Preston McAllister, who got on a fielder's choice just moments ago, is at first. 1-1 one, one the count. The pitch from Rich. Just inside for a ball. And it's a 2-1 count. This is a fun one here tonight. State ranked battle. Cam ranked number 7. CRB number 8. That's fouled along the left field line. McAllister didn't miss that by much. But he sends it foul and out of play. Now it's a 2-2 count. And remember, an uncaught third strike would, would be an out. Runners could not go. Here's the 2-2 from Rich to McAllister. Low, count full. We get another one. 3-2. The count, 4-3 to three the score. This has been... A doozy here tonight in Anita. Both teams trying to get towards postseason form. Here's the payoff pitch from Rich to McAllister. High, and the bases are loaded for Coon Rapids Baird. With that one, and that'll bring Josh Ramirez up to the plate. He's got an RBI single to his name tonight. Still nobody out. CRB has scored one. They have the bases loaded. 
with nobody out. Ramirez fouls that one away out of play. It's an 0-1 count. And 4-3 Cam. Clinging on to a lead. But Coon Rapids Bear trying to make him sweat it out. An 0-1 to Ramirez. Still nobody out here in the top of the seventh. This pitch from Rich. Low. Bowman keeps it in front of him. Ramirez will put the stop sign on Hayes at third. This inning started with Tanner Oswald drawing a walk. Hayes got on with an error. Preston McAllister got on with a fielder's choice. Aaron McAllister got on with a, a walk. No hits in this frame for CRB, and they're one run away from tying it as McAllister fouls that one back to the fence. It's an 0-2 count. Now, if Cam is to turn it back over, it would be their 6, 7, 8, and Ethan Fullman, Seth Ensley, and Jack Fullman. The 1 2 from Colby Rich to Josh Ramirez. Nobody gone here in the top of the seventh. Rich trying to work out of the jam and get a save. Ramirez bloops it right back to Rich. All the runners get back safely, although. The runner at first, McAllister, did not get back by much. There is one gone. Bases stay loaded. And if you're Colby Rich, maybe you can exhale a little bit. Because now you're probably thinking anything hit in play, you're trying to make the throw home and, you know, prevent this game from being tied. The only last thing you want is an errant throw, roll to the backstop, or something and it scored more than one run but the base is loaded for Coon Rapids Baird one gone here's Lance Clayberg one for three and had a single and two strikeouts Rich checks Hayes at third Clayberg fouls that one back to the fence that's an 0-1 count so it's Easton Hayes representing the tying run at third Preston McAllister the go-ahead run at second Aaron McAllister at first each runner gets a little bit of a lead off their respective bags. Rich, the righty, facing Clayberg, a righty. Sits on that one. It's a called strike, 0-2. And, and judging by the reaction from Coach Waddle in the third base box, either A, he didn't necessarily like where that was placed, or B, he didn't like that Clayberg took it. I think it was the former. Now swing and a miss from Clayberg there, and there's two gone. And Colby Rich has put the hammer down these last couple of batters. He's got a line out from Ramirez, a strikeout from Clayberg. And it's up to Gabe Obert to spark some magic for the Crusaders tonight. Base is loaded. Top of the seventh, two gone in a state-ranked contest. This is, this is big stuff. First pitch from Rich. Swing and a miss, Obert. Down 0-1. One, one A, number seven, Cam. One A, number eight, Coon Rapids Bear doing battle tonight. That one chopped in play to short. They'll scoop it, speaker to the bag to third, and therefore it is Fullman. This one ends as a Cam winner, four to three. Coon Rapids Bear leaves the bases loaded. They gave him a run late, but Joe Kaufman was money tonight on the mound. Lane Speaker ended up going deep for Cam in the win, and the Cougars move to 16-3 and three on the year. We will take a break. Back to wrap things up here in a moment on Cam AFM. From large projects to daily tasks, we can help at Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. This is Josh, and we pride ourselves on quality products, knowledge, and service. We're always available for advice on the projects that take years to design or the issues that need fixed in a hurry. And we offer free estimates on anything and everything you need to complete both. When you have a demand, we offer the supply. Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. Nutrient Ag Solutions is your leading agricultural retailer of crop inputs and expert solutions. And they're your choice in the region for top-of-the-line products and customer service. 
when nothing short of the best is your standard, talk with Nutrien Ag Solutions in Westboro, Missouri, Coin, Percival, and Essex, Iowa for fall application and products. Nutrien Ag Solutions, growing your crops and your bottom line. Well, it was a fun one here in Anita tonight. Well, it was a fun Cam one here in Anita tonight. Cam win Cam over Coon Rapids Baird, four to three here on Cam AFM at ninety nine one. Clarinda Shando and video streaming online camaland.com. It was two nothing Cam going into the third. Coon Rapids Baird battled back, tied it up in the third. Then Lane Speaker had a two run dinger in the fourth, made it four to two. Cam had kind of held on. Then Coon Rapids Baird made it interesting going into the seventh. They got a runner on with nobody out. It was a one run game. Bases were loaded. Colby Rich clamps down. He goes F3, strikeout, and then a 5 6 5 put out to end the game. Fun stuff here tonight. So Colby Rich gets the save. It is Joe Kaufman getting the win. Stellar tonight. 12 strikeouts, only gave up two hits, walked a handful. And five innings of work in Lane Speaker's offensive performance sticks out as well. Cam now moves to 16 and 3 on the year, 10 and 2 in the Rolling Valley. They get Glenn Ralston coming up on Wednesday night. Coon Rapids Bear drops to 16 and 5, 10 and 3 in the RVC. That snaps their four game winning streak. They've still won 13 in the last 15. They get Woodbine coming up on Wednesday night. But that's a wrap tonight from Anita. We'll have a full rundown available online later on tonight, KMALand.com. And reminder, tomorrow we're in Avoca, Logan Magnolia, HSTW softball. It'll be video streamed as well on the KMA Extreme and online at KMALand.com. We're looking forward to that, and we will see you then. Until then, saying so long from Anita for KMA Sports. I'm Trevor Mader. Thanks for listening, and have a great night.